It's time for another test with the 174. This time it has been deployed to the smart controller. So we've got to take it out for a short test flight just to see if everything works like it's supposed to do. And because the ground here is not ideal for takeoff, we will hand launch the drone instead. And that part is fairly easy. You simply just put the drone like this and then hold down the launch button here and then the circle then the motors will start and it will take off like this. But this would be my way of hand launching this drone. We saw quite a few issues uh, with the DJI Fly App 174 when I installed it on the old smart controller together with the Mini 2. It was lacking big time and it was a really poor user experience actually rendering the drone more or less useless. So of course I had to try it because you asked here with the smart controller to see if we see similar issues here and uh, I picked this location some of you might know where this is if you know already you can comment in yeah below the video <laughs> tell me if you can recognize this spot so what happened last time was we were just flying around and then at some point Everything was slowing down and hopefully that will not happen now here because this time we are doing uh, the risky stuff. We are over open water. We are flying over Esrom Lake and uh, this is such a beautiful place. See, look at this. I live up there in the houses in the back. So it's, it's really, really nice. It's a nice place, very quiet. And uh, as I can see so far, but that was the same last time. It had to uh, run for, uh, for a while before we ran into problems. Maybe we should just fly a little bit forward here. Fly a little bit over the grass field here and do a nice turn. Don't want to go too close to the houses up there. Let's get it into cinema mode here. That will allow me to do it a little slower. You can also see there's something with the focus here. So we should put that in autofocus. We make sure to go up here so I don't collide with the trees. I love to make these manual point of interest. I see the people that live down here, they have their own bridges. So they can have boats lying there and just sail for a nice cruise on this lake. One of the things that you're not allowed to do here is use the petrol fueled engines unless you have a special permission. Uh, so most of them are actually electric boats that you will find up here. And uh, let's just go a little bit higher here so we can see what's going on. So there are some pretty nice houses tucked away there behind the trees. And just to make sure that uh, we have the right version installed, let's just park the drone here. We have 32 satellites, which is really, really nice. Oh, so let's go in here. That's where it started to go wrong the last time, was when we were messing around with the menus here. So you can see it's 174. You can also see that the aircraft firmware is 0100 which is the latest version. And I should have brought some sunglasses here, or at least some kind of shade, because I have a hard time seeing what's going on here. I have a hard time looking at the camera with the sun directly in my face. So maybe I should just move the camera here a little bit. So maybe that will be better. You can see the footage is underexposed by 0.3 stop. And for those of you that can't remember what these stops are, they are basically one stop is equal to either halving or doubling the amount of light. So um, you have to do that to protect the highlights uh, in your footage. 
So let's just stop this one for a second. Switch it into quick shots. And in today we are doing something else than we normally do. We can do a drony. So we just mark this place here and then let it do a drony. The camera that I'm filming on right now is the Insta360 X3. That is a 360 camera that basically captures everything around the camera itself. So I have every detail recorded to the SD card when I get back home. And uh, this could be quite useful in some scenarios to have that kind of capabilities. Should we just try another one here? We can try a rocket, which lets the drone rise while keeping uh, sort of this tree in focus. So now it's doing its rocket thing. It's soon going to be fall, that's for sure. And we will start to see some of those amazing colors. Yes, yeah, look at this. Again, it's kind of losing track of the object. We saw that when I was testing it uh, in the different uh, scenarios. So it's kind of a little bit annoying. So we can bring the drone back and maybe we can do a little test with, with uh, the tracking, which usually tries to put a lot of stress you can see the 360 camera is there next to me. So let's just try and mark me here as the usual suspect. And we can do uh, active track. We can do parallel. I think that's best here with all the trees around. So I can just go here. And then turn around, <clears throat> go back again. <laughs> that was also working very nicely. Okay, so let's grab a photo while we edit. Let's just go into photo mode here. And I will choose the AEB as I normally do with three photos. One that is neutral exposed, one that is overexposed and one that is underexposed. Yes, so that, that one worked as well. For those of you that didn't know this location before, this is basically where I met the Birdman. Det ved jeg godt, du ikke må flyve med koldtoner her, ikke? Det ved jeg godt, jeg godt må. A guy that was uh, trying to interfere with my flying. And I'll make sure to link that video up here somewhere, in case you haven't seen it. Let's just jump into the menus here, just to check if everything is like it's supposed to be. Transmission, no disturbance in the dual band. Camera. We are recording, so we can't really control anything in here. But everything seems like it's supposed to. Control. Also no changes. And then finally, of course, the safety tab, which is right now set to a uh, break in case that we run into an obstacle. We have control over the Max distance and altitude, as well as the return to home altitude, which I like to not keep at 100. So let's just fly a little bit out here. Final glimpse before we run out of battery. Want to make sure that we have enough to make it home. Then we will just do like a nice smooth rotation here. Get a glimpse of the house up there. Look at that. I do a thing about a location like that. <laughs> that is really, really nice. Maybe just hand landing here. So, safe back on the ground. <laughs> just if you want to see it, this is the Insta360 camera that I'm using for these recordings. Someone told me there's still some Chinese uh, text that has not been translated inside the app and uh, I'm supposed to be able to access this if I go under settings here and I go under sync flight data as, as you can see it's uh, Chinese in there. So I guess this would be some of the things that they will rectify in the 175. But apart from that 
everything looks like I would expect it to. Oh, so it wouldn't go there in the store also not. And we can see here, and flight record cloud synchronization. Of course, we want that enabled. And as you can see here, the top line just shows the flight that we just did. That will hopefully synchronize once we get a Wi-Fi connection. So, have you had any issues uh, with this combination with the new 174? I know there's a new 175 out for Android, but it's not yet available for the smart controller. So, of course, I will test that once that becomes available. But until now, it seems like a pretty good match between these two. And I didn't see anything that was uh, unexpected or out of the ordinary. Have you seen something that does not work like uh, you would expect it to? Then let me know in the comments below. All of that is minor things, uh, so I would not be worried at all installing the 174 on your smart controller with your Mini 3 Pro. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.